What is up everyone? My name is Imani LaRussa and today I'm going to show you how I made this. This is going to be a five part series because there's so much detail in here. It's an advanced animation. I want to go through everything and I don't want to rush any of it. So we're going to go scene by scene individually and really break it down. So let's get started. I knew I wanted to focus on the idea of LRE, which is life reviewed experience. And it's basically this concept of reliving your events through your life right before you die. It's a super crazy phenomenon, but scientists have been studying it. And a lot of participants have said that they have experienced this. And so I wanted to create a piece that was surrounded by this idea. To start this project, it starts like every project with conceptualizing. I met with concept designer Christian Avila to go over some ideas for this. He also helped me with concepts for the Ty Dolla Sign and Kanye West project. Just like with every piece, we start off with a word tree. Because I have my idea, it's very easy to stem off from that. Recently, I had been super inspired by MC Esker, who is a surrealist illustrator who's absolutely iconic. So I grabbed a lot of references from his work and other similar artists. From the references, I was able to come up with like super solid ideas and I created them physically using like plastic styrofoam uh, material that I got from Michaels. The reason I did that before doing anything digital is because I wanted to make sure that I got the perspective right. So being able to have my own camera and be able to film it myself really gave me a better idea and understanding on how it was going to be illustrated and animated. Also, it helped making it physical because I was able to see what it looked like in 3D space. And because I was able to physically create them, I was able to use them for references and just trace over them for my sketches and making sure that it is most accurate to the correct perspective that I want it to be for my final illustrations. So when you're working with an illustrator, there's no confusion on what the perspective should look like. So moving into production, I gave all my sketches and references over to Paulina, who is an amazing illustrator and has a super trippy style for her to create these scenes. Okay, so we are going to hop straight into the Illustrator file. As you can see, I am missing the main component of this because the original illustration was a little more of a realistic opening. I wanted this particular scene to symbolize like birth. And I think Paulina did an amazing job and put a lot of detail into the whole portal. <laughs> Um, that it may be a little too detailed for YouTube. Definitely want to make sure that I could still get ads on this video. So just to be safe, we're not gonna show that, um, but you could just imagine what is there. Um, so I wanted to hop into the Illustrator file just to show you the layers and how I was able to create what I ended up creating. So as you can see, the color palette that was used on the Illustrator files is different from the color palette that we ended up going with. I didn't realize it when I first started conceptualizing it that I wanted more of a restrictive color palette. That's something that you kind of want to figure out in the beginning rather than later. It was a lot of going back and changing the actual color. So with this type of illustration, there's a lot of elements in here that I had realized I'm going to need to recreate because it's not going to be able to translate over to After Effects well. For example, some of this coloring uh, relies on the color mesh. And so you could see all these points, that's where the color mesh is. For some reason, when you convert this to a shape layer in After Effects, it doesn't bring the color with it. So that's a bummer. So I needed to recreate create the snake, which I will go into that because that's an additional plugin that I ended up using for that. Um, the fingers was something that was difficult for me because it's 
this is a 2D illustration and I needed to make it look like the fingers were moving out to in. So now that you've seen the structure of the Illustrator file, let's hop into After Effects. So there's a lot going on here. <laughs> Um, so let's just start from the very beginning of uh, getting everything prepared for this shot. So for the background, in particular the stars, how I created that was using Red Giant's Trap Code Particular. I've been using Trap Code Particular for years and this is my most used plugin. So it's really cool because it has the designer aspect, which is basically uh, templated particles that has already been created. So they have presets over here on the left hand side. It allows me to go in and select one of these and avoid all the hassle of having to do the front end work. Obviously I can customize this, which I did to create the stars. So what's also great about Trap Code Particular is that it uses the 3D renderer with the camera in After Effects. So if you have a camera set up, it will move in the position of that. So in here on the camera, I'm moving in Z space forward through all these stars and it's like, we are traveling through. And the way that I got this star look is actually another Red Giant plugin called Star Glow. Uh, I just dragged this on, looks like it's shining. Star Glow uses the whites and the highlights of any sort of comp and it just creates like this really cool effect. So I can just show you. So it adds this really cool glowing edge and you can change the colors of them. Uh, they have these preset colors. Um, so there's so many different variations of glows and colors. It's a, it's a really cool plugin. So next let's get into the tunnel um, of traveling through this hole. Um, so what I did for this was I just used a simple color gradient for the background as well as the stars from the particular plugin. And then I just created a simple mask of it opening. And then for the tunnel, what I did was I created one side of shape layers where it has this bend. I added a inner glow on all these and it changes color over time. So the way that I was able to get that blue color was with the Colorama. And what Colorama does is it uses the spectrum of black to white and replaces the colors with what this output cycle is. That's why I'm using more of a gray scale on this because it gives me more flexibility to change the color if I need to change it in the future instead of having to change each individual layer's color. So I did this half and then what I did was I just mirrored the effect from uh, the initial cut. So we would have this, but with the mirrored, we now have that fitting hole. And to sell more of the hole that's being lifted, I got the inspiration from the video reference that I recorded of the curtains and I had created this crease. So let me put this on full res. As this starts to open up, you'll see that the edges start to ruffle as if it was like a satin material. Um, and I just used my video reference to get a good idea of this. And I just created a simple shape layer and put a mass path on all of them. And to get this gradient on here, um, it's kind of hard to do this with just the custom fills where it has the linear gradient or the radial gradient because as it starts curving, the radial gradient would make sense to put that on there. But um, when it's linear, it wouldn't really make sense for it to have a radial gradient because it's straight and the gradient should reflect on that. So what I did instead was I just made the stroke black and then I use this shade thrower plugin, uh, which I've talked about in the past, uh, but it's a super awesome plugin. But what's great is that it uses one side of the edges to add the shadow or highlight to it rather than um, having to make it work with the linear or radial gradient. So you can see it creases and that's just to sell that it is distorting, that it is moving. And now let's move into the hand. So 
there's a lot of comps in these hands because there's just so much uh, that's going on. It, Like I said before, the issue was being able to make a 2D hand look 3D. Um, so let's hop into this comp within a 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 comp. Uh, there's a lot of comps. So, um, let's kind of start forward and backwards. Um, so we are in the hand comp. So an issue that I was running into that I mentioned before was the color mesh and being able to replicate that in After Effects is a lot more tedious, uh, hence all of these pre-comps. Um, so I had created, uh, this would be the knuckles of the highlights. Um, I'm going to show you what the comp looks like as we're doing it. So I'm going to lock this so that we can see what we're working with. And then I'm going to open this pre-comp up. So this is the highlights of the knuckles. And then from there, um, I just added a simple bevel onto them instead of individually going in and adding the bevel i just pre-comp them all um and then i added a fast blur on them to smooth it out um so this is what it would look like without it so obviously it's very nice smooth gradients and this is just additional color and then pre-comp that a lot of times i'm pre-comping because i'm layering on my layer styles so now let's get into the fingers part of it. So I wanted to make a point to see the joints in the fingers. So the way that I did that was I had the initial finger. I just duplicated it um, because in the initial illustration, you just see the knuckles and you don't really see the entire finger itself. So I had duplicated the fingers to create the joints and so you could see it starts out straight and then it bends it goes a little bit over but uh, to smooth that out with all of these additional uh, creases you don't really want to see that and you could definitely not see it here and the way that i was able to hide that was i had added a fast blur on it so it not only blurs out those rough edges but it also creates that softer gradient and then in order to tighten it up i use the levels effect and instead of just changing the color i changed the alpha channel i basically tighten in the alpha channel that is surrounded uh, by this blur so by adding that on it sharpens these edges and now it's smooth and you don't see um, these crazy creases. And then the, the color difference was um, I just added a uh, hue and saturation on it. So I did that for all of the fingers. Um, and so now it has more of a realistic look to it where it has those joints, but it is still completely and entirely 2D. Next, we will get into uh, the flower. Um, there's nothing too crazy about the petals itself, but the eyeball is actually a really cool effect because it looks like it um, is moving 3D. Uh, because it's distorting um, on like a sphere plane. Um, so let's check this eyeball out. So I have the pupil on a separate layer outside of the eyeball. And the reason for that is because I'm using a CC sphere. It allows me to use the roundness of a sphere with manipulating it and making it look like it is a 3D sphere, but it is uh, entirely 2D. So in this comp, you'll see the distortion and um, it totally looks stretched, but in the sphere, it doesn't. And that's just because the CC sphere um, tries to stretch it to the comp size. And so sometimes you'll have to create a pre-comp and change the sizing in there. A good way to be able to do that and get the accurate size is using this locking method. So if I went to my eyeball where my comp was, I would lock this, go into my sphere, 
and then I could go in here and change the sizing of it to make sure that it uh, fit perfectly. And then next we will go into the snake. Um, this is actually a really cool uh, plugin that I found when I created my Doja Cat snake animation. I was recommended this by the After Effects subreddit and I finally had the chance to use it because since then I haven't been able to create a snake. So the snake plugin is uh, from this Amino store. Um, it's pretty old from <laughs> CS6 uh, and they haven't updated it because why fix it if it ain't broke? I um, think it came out in 2013, so um, you just download it and it is a little outdated, so you'll have to do some tweaking, but it works and it's free. And what's great about this plugin is it allows you to work on a customized path in which you could create your own texture for. So something that's great for this is uh, like customized uh, gradients. So if you wanted to create like a snake um, or any sort of curvature on a path, you only get the two options of being able to use a linear gradient or a radial gradient. And so you run into a lot of customization issues with that. And so what's cool about this is you essentially make the texture and then it moves along that path. So here I have my snake texture and over time what it does is it, it slightly moves the gradation on it so it looks like it is rotating um, or it's turning as it's curving over. So you can kind of see like the belly is at the bottom the lines move along the path. I won't go too in depth in it because I think EJ does an amazing tutorial on it. So if you are creating something that has some sort of curved path on it, I highly suggest using this plugin. I'm gonna go over the cut transition between this first shot and the second shot and everything in scene two. And that is going to be it for us. The end of part one of a five part series. There's a lot of detail in this, obviously. So I definitely wanted to give you uh, like bite-sized parts of uh, this. So you weren't overwhelmed with all the crazy detail and that it didn't get rushed. So if you guys have any questions, definitely reach out. Um, I'm gonna be posting the other parts uh, tomorrow. So stay tuned and make sure your notifications are on and subscribe. Thank you.